The next step, now that we have collision turned on for our particle system, is I am going to turn off emission. So the emission module is, and actually we're going to turn off play on awake as well. So the emission module is controlling how often we are emitting particles automatically, right? How often the particle system will automatically emit particles as long as it's playing, right? We do not want to either play the particle system when the scene starts or emit anything unless we're doing it via script. So we're going to disable that and set that up so that we can control it in our script. So with the particle launcher game object still selected, I'm going to scroll down to the bottom of the inspector, choose add component, and I'm going to type particle launcher. And since that script doesn't exist in the project, we're going to hit new script, and then we're going to hit create and add. Let's just drag this and drop it in our scripts folder. Now we can double click it to open it for editing. And I am going to quickly increase my font size. And so the first thing that we want our particle launcher to do is to emit one particle every frame, right? So we are going to need a reference to the particle system. So we're going to create a public particle system variable called particle launcher. Okay, so we are going to declare a public particle system type variable called particle launcher. And in update, we are going to call particle system dot emit, which allows us to spawn a certain number of particles when the function is called. So we're going to call particle launcher dot emit. And we're going to pass in the number one. And this is going to allow us to emit one particle every frame. So this should be emitting now at a higher rate than uh, what we had earlier. But we don't actually want it to emit every frame regardless of what the player is doing. So we're going to add a check if input.getButton fire1, then we are going to call particle launcher dot emit. So now when the player presses the left mouse button, the particle is going to emit particles for as long as the mouse button is held down. We do a quick test to make sure that's working. So we need to drag a reference to assign it, play our scene. Woo! So we can emit particles while we click the mouse. So, so far so good. And the next thing that we're gonna do is we want to emit a spray of particles at the location that we shot. So for this, we're gonna use the pre-made splatter particles object in the scene, which I showed you, this one. And this is a pre-configured particle system. And we are going to tell it to emit when one of our particles from our launcher collides with something in the scene. So what we're going to do in our script is we are going to use the on particle collision callback. So we're going to add a new function. And on particle collision takes a game object, which we're going to call other. Now, I'm going to read from the documentation here. To retrieve detailed information about all the collisions caused by the particle system, the particle physics extensions dot get collision events function must be used to retrieve the array of particle system collision events. So this is actually the approach that we're going to use uh, to get information about where the collision occurred and the rotation, but first we're just going to set up the most basic version of this, which is when anything collides at all, we're going to emit from our splatter particles. So 
we are going to add a public particle system called splatter particles. And we are going to add a function called emit at location. So in emit at location, we are going to call splatter particles dot emit again emit one particle for each collision and we're going to call emit a location from on particle collision we're going to end up passing in some more detailed information but at this point we should be able to control when particles are emitted if not where so now if we shoot something our particle system should emit some particles just not in the right place. So let's give that a quick test to make sure it's working. And I'm gonna take the splatter particles and I'm just going to move them up off the ground a little bit so that we can see them and I'm going to frame select it on them. So we have them framed in the scene view. I'm going to disable maximize on play so we can see both and I'm going to temporarily set the color to a lovely green color just so we can see it so it's not white and we'll set that back in a moment. Okay, so now if I play, Oh, I didn't assign it in the inspector. First, let's do that. Uh, let's go to particle launcher. And now we have our splatter particles variable here. And we're going to drag in a reference to the splatter particles game object. And now if we play, shoot, there we go. We can see when something hits the ground or hits any surface, it is emitting but it's just not emitting in the right location, right? So that is the next step that we are going to take care of. We're gonna get some information about where our collision occurred and then use that to position and rotate our splatter particle system. So let me just check the chat before I move on, see how everybody's doing. Uh, somebody's asking if you wanna emit less than one per frame. No, you would not use a float value. You would need to add in some code some timer code. So if you've seen in the past when we've wanted to limit like the fire rate on certain things, uh, you can use uh, some, some timing code like that. There's a lot of different ways to limit the repetition rate of something. I'm just not getting into that right now because I want to keep it simple. Oscar Russo asks, why was it emitting automatically before and why is it not emitting now unless emit is called? That is because in both of these systems, the emission module is now disabled, both for the launcher and the splatter particles.